going on everybody this is DK Dynamite for a massive video here for you guys we're gonna be talking about all the DLC releasing in season 4 from the maps weapons operators and even events definitely stay tuned but before we jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because about 73% of you that watch my videos aren't subscribed so make sure you guys are getting notifications every time I update you on Black Ops Cold War but as you'll see in the background I'm absolutely loving the die hard point mode here in season 3 reloaded managed to drop two nukes they're gonna be seeing here in this video tonight and hopefully Treyarch does intend to keep the nuke streak itself in future seasons by maybe adding it to other modes in the game or maybe even keeping it permanently in all modes you never know but when it comes to the release date of season 4 according to the in-game battle pass June the 16th is when season 3 is going to end with the release of the next season on the 17th so if this does remain true then I'll be doing a countdown stream on that Wednesday for release of the next season a couple of hours after that I'm looking forward to this and since all of the major remaining content for season 3 reloaded has already released or is about to as soon as this weekend we can safely assume we'll start to get some pretty light marketing for season 4's multiplayer zombies and warzone content as soon as early next week so we'll also end up seeing Treyarch officially drop the season 3 outro cinematic cutscene which people out there have claimed has already played for them in a boot up of Cold War or Warzone hasn't played for me yet in game it probably was a mistake to drop it a bit early and since Charlie Intel and Treyarch uh, haven't mentioned it at all over on Twitter or their YouTube channels we could just assume that they're going to end up releasing that officially probably closer to the launch of season four but if you haven't seen the cutscene yet i'll play it for you guys in full towards the end of this video now activision is also attending the summer games fest which begins on june the 10th so i wouldn't be surprised if they had a panel which presented some marketing for the next major updates in black ops cold war and Warzone, leading up to season four just a few days after that event and i'm happy activision is attending they can also take that opportunity during the event to maybe reveal a title for call of duty 2021 but we'll talk more about that later in this video now speaking of summer we are going to see a days of summer event according to some curious individuals in the community images were found confirming a 2021 days of summer for black ops cold war and Warzone. so that actually released during season 5 reloaded a modern warfare last august but because of these images surfacing relatively recently that could be suggesting that we could see a days of summer in black ops cold war as soon as season 4 but if not maybe a bit after that now there's no saying how different this days of summer is going to be compared to last year's but it'll likely be in the same ballpark where you have about a week to complete different obstacle courses to unlock various cosmetics like blueprints, calling cards, stickers, and maybe a bit more than that. But when it comes to new kill streaks coming to Black Ops Cold War, by the time we get close to season five, we'll be able to flip a coin as to which kill streak is next. But right now we have three kill streaks remaining, and do the math, right? Three kill streaks with three seasons left to come. So we'll be getting one in each season coming up. And there's already plenty of gameplay that has surfaced, as well as other spicy material for these upcoming kill streaks. I'll have that link down below in the description. You first up have the hand cannon annihilator straight from the campaign it's gonna make getting nukes a lot easier in black ops cold war imagine getting a couple of kills with your weapon then the hand cannon the death machine then the war machine nukes are gonna be relatively simple for a majority of the community out there we next up have the fan favorite canine unit from black ops 1 and 2 not surprised about this one returning and lastly we have the flamethrower which concept art in black ops cold war officially exists of for whatever reason and i've always said you know what because the concept art exists for it from season one it's probably going to be quote unquote the next streak to drop but it hasn't they dropped the harp the death machine and now the thresher so there's no saying why concept art of it exists as of a couple of months ago but maybe some plans change and they're saving this flamethrower to make it a little bit better for season five or six but it could be dropping in the next two weeks you never know now when it comes to weapons coming to black ops cold war you first up have the Ameli, an lmg i recognize from call of duty ghost and currently is using the black ops 4 hades lmg model if you rip this weapon from the black ops cold or files we even have the set may currently doesn't have a placeholder model but here's an image of it that i found online so in case you guys are interested right some of these weapons have placeholders some of them don't we next up have the nail gun a fan favorite from black ops 3 which i'm surprised to be hearing about but it's a nice surprise right i think nobody out there is going to be complaining about it but it may be as frustrating to die from as the crossbow you guys will probably agree with that but that should be coming at some point soon we next up have the rp84 which is currently using the black ops 4 switchblade model when you rip this weapon so it's gonna be a smg of sorts probably a fast-paced one and lastly we have the calico using the black ops 4 cordite model another smg and don't forget these are subject to change but because they have placeholder models already probably means they'll be dropping as soon as season four but not all of them right some of them will drop at the start some of them will be saved for season four reloaded and there could be other weapons out there too that we don't know about yet they may also be dropping in the next couple of weeks
leaks. Keep that in mind. But there are rumors about an explosive crossbow, a malice, some other items. But I can definitely tell you guys that a lot of those items were referring to a lot of the finishing moves that are in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. People out there kind of confused some of the code they data mined for actual DLC weapons, but they weren't. They were just bonus items that are used in other aspects of the game. Now, when it comes to maps that we know of so far, and they're going to include, but aren't limited to, the following, right? We first up have Echelon, which we've talked extensively about in many previous videos. It's a bit of a hybrid between Vertigo from Black Ops 2, High Rise from Modern Warfare 2, and even a tad bit of Dome from Modern Warfare 3. I talked about the storyline implications of this map in a video that I have linked down below in the description as well, and gameplay of this map already does exist thanks to several news outlets out there that for some reason reported on it without any repercussions from Activision, but this map does sound pretty exciting, and I think it's going to be one of the better 6v6 maps in this game. We've been talking about it since, I think, January, so this map has been done for a while, but clearly has been saved for a very specific story reason that we're about to see in Season 4. We then have Dunes, a supposed combined arms experience with vehicle spawns, but the map is a bit too small for fire teams, so that's why right now everybody's pretty much on the fence of saying it's for combined arms, which I think is great. We haven't seen a new combined arms map since, what, launch, right? There were a few in the beta, a few different ones at launch. Launch, that's about it. So this is of course subject to change, but it takes place in Africa apparently and maybe relatively close to where Satellite is, which is also in Angola, Africa. So Africa being mentioned in the Season 3 outro cinematic probably means this map fits the bill for the upcoming season. And gameplay for it already does exist, which is also linked down below in the description. But now when it comes to remastered multiplayer maps coming to Black Ops Cold War, the Modern Warfare 2 Ghost over on Twitter has made it clear that at least 8 more maps were scheduled back in January, which was after Express dropped, but before Stan off release so going to be seeing at least seven more remasters apparently coming to this game with about one to two dropping in each upcoming season wouldn't be surprised to see more black ops one multiplayer dlc maps dropping in seasons four through six but for right now it seems like activision is attempting to quote unquote remaster black ops 2 to an extent by releasing as many of those fan favorite maps from that game here in this game to boost popularity and please a lot of people out there that are looking for some nostalgic multiplayer maps so we know for sure that hijacked has been mentioned quite a bit by a lot of different leakers in the community, and the Modern Warfare 2 Ghost that say he's about 90% sure Hijack is the next remaster, dropping in Season 4, take that as you may, but I also want to bring up Weather Variants potentially also dropping in this game, since they played a pretty big part in the DLC season for Black Ops 4 multiplayer, and my honest opinion has always been that Weather Variants to me, like Firing Range Night, Arsenal Sandstorm, Jungle Flooded, they seem like maps that fit the bill for very strong filler content in a potential year 2, and Black Ops 4 didn't get a year 2, and Black Ops Cold War might not either if the rumor is true that Treyarch's going to be helping Sledgehammer with Call of Duty 2021. So the reason I bring up weather variants is because somebody out there by the name of Dude Trust Me, who has leaked some fairly reliable information in the past on Twitter, did say that he heard about a diesel night that was supposed to drop in Season 3 Reloaded, but it didn't. Not sure who his source is or exactly how reliable this person is, but if he is correct, then Diesel Knight may end up coming at some point in a future season, which is ripped straight out of the campaign. But in my opinion, to make Diesel Knight different from the current version of Diesel we have, might as well extend the map a bit, add the motel area, maybe make it a combined arms map. That would be pretty refreshing for Diesel in multiplayer. But now for Fireteam, we do have locations such as Zoo, Weather Station, Battery, Mines, and Chemical Labs left to release. Walik is out there saying that Zoo and Weather Station looked finished before the release of this game itself, so that probably means Zoo and Weather Station are the runner-ups for Season 4 and 5, but I will leave some gameplay as well in the description in case you guys are interested as to how these maps look currently for Fireteam, and Zoo already fits the aesthetic of Season 4 quite well, so that's likely the next region we'll end up seeing in both Multiplayer and Outbreak, and in terms of the other locations, right, Battery, Mines, Chemical Labs, because they weren't finished before release doesn't mean they won't be finished before the end of Season 6, which could pave the way for eventually seeing the entire Euro Mountains in either Fireteam, Outbreak or even Warzone. Now, Trek also mentioned pre release that we'll be seeing other LTMs added to Fireteam over the course of this year. And so far, aside from Dirty Bomb, we've just gotten Fireteam Hardpoint and Fireteam Elimination, Elimination being the best in my opinion. So I wouldn't be surprised to see at least one to two more LTMs added to Fireteam before the end of Season 6 Reloaded. We'll just have to be patient with that. But now, when it comes to operators to be expected in Season 4, we have the following names already revealed early thanks to some curious individuals out there Deathstalker, Komodo, and even Quicksand. Now, they all do sound like villains working for Stitch, but it's unclear at this time if any of those characters are working for Woods and his crew. Could one of those guys be a sleeper agent that just woke up and is going to betray our crew at some point, maybe working undercover? 
that's an interesting theory, but we usually see around four operators added per season, so I think there will be at least one more character announced during the marketing event of the season, and we're still waiting for iconic characters like Mason, Hudson, Weaver, and some other fan favorites. So in a previous video that I'll have linked down below, I went over a big connection between Stitch, the sleeper agents, and even Mason. That could bring Mason out of supposed retirement, since right now in the Black Ops timeline, according to Treyarch, Alex Mason is raising his son, David Mason. We see a glimpse of that in the Black Ops 2 campaign as well during the 80s. So I'm curious how Stitch can maybe piss off Mason, strike a nerve, bring him out of retirement, and make him a playable operator in a future season to come. But another image surfaced recently, which was pretty strange, but it's of the VIP Escort, if you're familiar with that mode in multiplayer, popping up as a playable character. And it's unclear if it was a glitch or if it'll be a bundle at some point. I wouldn't be shocked to see him as a bundle, but hey, it could have been a mistake. Somebody must have been messing with the game on PC and loaded him into his operator menu, but I figured I would bring that up just in case. The VIP Escort may end up being a fully playable operator for every mode in the game in a future season. Now in regards to Warzone, Raven has confirmed several updates currently in development that hopefully can drop as soon as Season 4, which include Dark Aether Camel Support, an FOV Slider, a next-gen enhancement, and a different application for next-gen consoles, right? PS5, Xbox Series X, and even some lighting improvements for The Sun over in Verdansk 84. Those are all very helpful improvements that hopefully some of which will release in the next two weeks, right? Fingers crossed on that one. Now, a Red Door fast travel system was accidentally spoiled in a recent Activision survey, so that's definitely spiced things up in Verdansk 84. There's also a Mines area in the new iteration of Verdansk, which is closed at the moment, but in a blog post was teased to be opening up in a future update, so that could give us some vibes from Ghost Town back in Blackout. Maybe there's zombies down there or something special. I'm curious if there's an Easter egg tied to the bottom of the mines in any way, but that could be opening up in Season 4, which would fit the aesthetic of this hot, desert, wildlife type theme that multiplayer is probably going to have for Black Ops Cold War, but I'm just happy that it took the Treyarch integration to finally push for new points of interest to be added into Verdansk. Also, don't forget about the World War II Vanguard reveal, currently codenamed X2 in the files, whereas the Black Ops Cold War reveal last summer was codenamed X1 for Warzone, do the math there, it's probably a reveal event for Sledgehammer's next game. Not much is known about the event other than the fact that developers have slowly started removing references to X2 in the files of Warzone, to avoid spoilers of course, I understand that completely, but information was discovered about a month ago that a Panzer Zug, which is an armored train from the real Second World War, is supposed to make an appearance in Verdansk somehow. Not sure how that's going to make sense, maybe they'll tie in the Dark Aether somehow to make things from other timelines jump over into the A. Not too sure about that, but we actually could see a Panzer Zug train in the World War II campaign from 2017, so I like that tie-in there, and it should be a pretty cool event, but as of right now, the event has been rumored for some point in Season 4, so anywhere from June 17th to, I think, the beginning of August when Season 5 starts should be when we end up seeing this new reveal for Sledgehammer. And last and definitely not least, when it comes to zombies, we have the second Outbreak quest set to drop at the start of Season 4 with DLC 3 Berlin confirmed for an update later in Season 4. So that's probably going to be Season 4 Reloaded, hopefully a bit sooner than that, but they of course don't want to overshadow Outbreak by dropping Berlin too close to the second Outbreak quest, but it was confirmed the second Outbreak quest is also going to tie into whatever we're going to see in DLC 3, which makes sense. We could potentially also see a new region in Outbreak, let that be Zoo or Weather Station, which are likely next in line for Fireteam and Multiplayer. Now we then got gameplay of Crossroads for Outbreak, and it's linked down below, can show it on screen, but people have to discover recently with an update that for some reason Outbreak is now playable on Crossroads. And it's a bit ironic considering Crossroads is actually removed from both Combined Arms Multiplayer and Onslaught Zombies because of issues with the map, but the map has finally returned to both modes. But now it's being worked on for Outbreak, so could that be tied into the second Outbreak quest where we go there, like we did for Ruka in the first Outbreak quest, where it's a very important location, you know, a boss fight could be there, or will it just be a new region that may be tied to Weather Station even, right? Weather Station does kind of fit the bill and the theme of how Crossroads works, so maybe those will be tied together, it's unclear, but we could also maybe see Armada and other regions that are from Combined Arms that aren't in Onslaught or Outbreak yet, added in the future, I wouldn't mind that whatsoever, but I went over the story implications, teasers, and maybe a few spoilers for upcoming Zombies content in a previous video that I'll also have linked down below in the description. The first Outbreak quest alone brought us quite a bit of information that definitely teases the future of Dark Aether as we know it. It has me very excited about that.
that. We then have the new Outbreak Wonder Weapons, which did surface a good three plus months ago, and it's unclear if they are for Outbreak. I'm just gonna say they are for right now, so they don't sound like Wonder Weapons we're gonna see in Berlin or an actual round base experience, but these Mega Barrels remind me of the Arcs from Extinction, where you attach them onto your weapon and it makes your weapon quote unquote enhanced as if they're pack a punched. And these Mega Barrels have the capability of being able to shoot out all of the enemy's powers from Black Ops Cold War Zombies, whether it's the blast from a Mangler, acid from a Megaton, lightning from a Tempest, some other ability from a Mimic, and so much more as well, even Panzer Rockets. So they sound insane, and don't get me wrong, could end up dropping in the second Outbreak quest, could be a part of the quest, or added as future content later, but they could also be placeholder content, because when people actually booted up a game on PC and loaded these Mega Barrels from the files of the game, it just spawned in an XM4 with a Mega Barrel attached to it. So, could they be placeholders for actual Wonder Weapons we end up seeing that do shoot out these enemy abilities, or will they still be these quote-unquote Mega Barrel arc-like attachments for every weapon in the game? It's unclear right now, but gameplay of these barrels does exist and will be linked down below in the description. We next up have a new field upgrade, which still hasn't released and I almost forgot about a couple of months ago, the Lightning Links. Now it's funny because Toxic Growth and Lightning Links were also mentioned in that big info dump that leaked out, I think it was in September, before the launch of Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Lightning Links still hasn't come out yet, but references to it have been found relatively recently for Zombies in Season 4, so that could be dropping next, maybe they'll save it for later, but not sure what Lightning Links even does, it sounds like, to me, a Wonder Waff type ability, where it kind of Lightning Links through a horde of zombies, maybe that's what it is, but we already have Deadwire that does that, so it's unclear what this is going to be, but leave all your best thoughts on it down below in the comments, there's also a possibility of even seeing Tier 6 upgrades for all of our abilities in game, wouldn't mind that, but not sure how much better you could make everything that's currently in Black Ops Colder right now, Tier 5 already makes everything fairly overpowered, but you know what, it's more replayability if they end up adding in a new crystal type for some tier 6 upgrades, right? You never know, but leakers out there have mentioned that pretty recently over on Twitter, so I'll keep that in mind just in case. Of course, also expect new LTMs to replace Cranked, and it's unfortunate, right, because Crank does play very well. Might as well keep it in private games at least, right? But they'll probably replace it in Season 4. And also expect a new LTM for Onslaught to replace Mystery Munitions. Maybe we'll eventually see an LTM somehow incorporated into some of the Outbreak regions as well. I wouldn't mind that. And we all know that PlayStation has been marketing Onslaught quite a bit with every season, with its own special trailer marketing the free blueprint that gets added, as well as the new LTM for PlayStation-exclusive players. Now, Containment is also confirmed to return to Black Ops Cold War, and it was mentioned by Kevin and drew an expert designer over on Twitter. So with that return being confirmed, that hopefully means we'll get containment added back as soon as season four with some potential support for even Diesel and Mansion maps that didn't get onslaught support in season two or three. So I think they're long overdue. But like I said in a previous video, containment to me doesn't feel like an LTM of onslaught. It does play a bit faster, a little bit differently. I get that. But it's the only way to play Onslaught on the gunfight map, so why ever get rid of it? I'm just glad that it's confirmed to return. Maybe it'll come back as the new LTM in Season 4 with a bit of a twist. You never know, but by the time Xbox and PC see Onslaught on November the 1st, you'll hopefully be seeing all the Onslaught LTMs added in at once for all Zombies players out there who don't have a PlayStation. Now, with the recent nerf of a couple of weapons, I know some got buffed, but a lot of them got nerfed, and with the increased difficulty of high rounds, Double Tap is definitely needed, so we're finally going to be seeing a new perk added in Season 4 Zombies, which has me hyped, but which one will it be? Will it be Double Tap, Mule Kick, or PhD, the three remaining perks that have been leaked and are expected to drop at some point in Black Ops Cold War? For me, it seems like Double Tap is the best fit, just to make sure that high rounds become balanced again. But if we see Double Tap as a machine on Berlin, which I think is very likely at this point, what happens with Mule Kick and PhD? I mean, to me, PhD feels like the last perk they're going to add in, kind of ending off the season with a bang, adding in a fan favorite perk that will make zombies a lot easier for using a ray gun or other explosive weapons. So, seems like the last perk they'll add in on this supposed DLC 4, which may take place inside the Dark Aether. But what about Mule Kick, right? Do you just add that in through the Wonder Fizz, don't give it its own perk machine? Because right now, the tradition is that they add in a new perk every time a new map releases, round based at least, that features the new perk machine. We had that with Elemental Pop on D Machina, Tombstone on Firebase, we'll leave it at that. But we of course had the Double Tap poster over in Diesel, and I know it was in the campaign as well, so it might not mean anything, but it could be a hint that it is the next perk to release for Black Ops Cold War Zombies. Now, as I reiterated many times in the past, this is a massive season for zombies alone. I mean, think about it. A second Outbreak quest, which may have its own cutscenes, massive boss fights, I'm excited for that. But then, just a couple weeks after that, seeing the round base map Berlin, which has been heavily hyped for months now. We're gonna have 160 days in between Firebase and Berlin, so 
expectations will be through the roof for DLC 3. Now that could be a good thing in terms of community energy, but could also hurt the community if the map doesn't hit certain expectations, and we just waited since February to see this. I'm just crossing my fingers that the extra time they had to develop Berlin makes the map that much better in terms of longevity, replayability, side quests, the main quest, the boss fight, and whatever cuts we end up seeing with Berlin. I'm hopeful for that, but to end off this video, here is the raw footage of the Season 3 outro cinematic cutscene, which hopefully gets published officially by Treyarch and Charlie Intel in the next week or so, but without further ado, enjoy! They rescued Adler faster than predicted. No matter, our work with him is done. So, we move forward? Not yet. Their satellites are interfering with our broadcast. The Verdansk test subjects are in place, but we are not getting through. They still don't know what we're doing. We have the advantage. We should press it. Our man in South Africa is standing by. Agreed. All the pieces are in play. Make the call. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. That is everything we know so far about what is going to release in Season 4 or beyond for Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. What do you guys think about the upcoming weapons, maps, operators, and some upcoming events? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everyone.